Use the summary cricket data below to find the 98% confidence interval estimate for the true slope beta 1. So we want to do the 98% confidence interval for beta 1. For the linear relationship between temperature and the frequency of chirps. Okay, so this is related to some data we had in a problem um, where we were talking about the, um, the frequency of chirps given different temperatures and there was, you know, in that case we wanted to run a hypothesis test on this question, is there a linear relationship between the temperature outside and the frequency of chirps for crickets? So now we're doing a similar idea or a similar problem where we're constructing a confidence interval and based on the interpretation of that interval we'll be able to tell if there is in fact a linear relationship. So the confidence interval is going to be constructed around the slope. So the important thing is at the end that we interpret that interval accurately and I'll we'll explain how to do that when we finish the problem. So that's where this part comes in, what does the interval indicate? So let's start with the first thing, which is to normally collect the data to construct the interval. So the data for the interval is actually going to be the hardest part of the procedure because we actually have, when we go to um, calculate the data, we have a lot of steps to work out. They have been nice enough to give us the sum of square values and the n for the problem. We also have the confidence level. Those are all important things. So let me go ahead and write down some of that. The n is 15, and let's remind ourselves that the confidence level here leads to alpha of 2%, right? Because the confidence level is 98, so alpha is 0 0.02. All right, now from there, what I want to do is to go ahead and uh, start with the very first step, which is to get the slope estimator beta 1 hat. So that's going to be SSXY over SSXX. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the values they provided to us. So that's going to be for the top number, 136 point two, three repeating it looks like, divided by 631, this is SSXX, divided by uh, 0 0.64933. Okay, let's work that out and see what that ends up giving us as a value. So we'll have 136.23 repeating, divided by 631.64933. And when I'm done with that, oops. All right, I have a little error there in my calculation. There you go. So when I'm done with that, I get the answer 0 0.21567 dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that value, that beta 1 value is going to be important later. So I'm going to store that under alpha B. So I'm going to say store under alpha B. So I'm storing that answer under the letter B. Hit enter, and there it is in my calculator. Okay, so we'll come back and use that in a moment. After getting that value, we need to get the sum of square for error. So this term is SSYY minus beta 1 hat times SSXY, the mixed term. All right, let's plug that in and see what that gives us. So SSYY is 41.993 repeating minus beta 1 hat, which is going to be 0.21567, so on and so forth, times uh, the SSXY value, which is the 136.23 repeating number. Okay, let's see what that ends up working out to be used by using our calculators here. So we will have in the problem as our answer. 41.9933333 minus our slope estimator beta 1 times 136.23 repeating. All right, when we hit enter there, we get 12.6106. Okay, so 12.61069 dot dot dot. Okay. Now, once we have the SSE, our next step is to determine S. Now, S is basically the square root of SSE over N minus 2. So SSE, of course, we just saw was 12.61069 dot 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 divided by N minus 2. N is 15. Take away 2, you get 13. Throw that under the square root. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so I still have that S value in my calculator. I'm going to divide it by 13. And then I'm going to take the square root by raising it to the half power, which is equivalent to taking the square root. And I'm going to get 0 0.9849 dot dot dot. All right, that S value is going to be important in our next and final important calculation, which is the S for beta 1 hat. In other words, the standard error for beta 1 hat. 
So I'm going to take that value, s, and I'm going to divide it by the square root of s, s, x, x. The sum of squares for x's. So the s value that we just had was 0 0.98491 dot dot dot. That will be divided by the square root of the value we had for s, s, x, x, which was 631.64933. Okay, let's see what that gives us finally. So we'll take that value and divide it by the square root of 631.64933. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and we end up with 0 0.03918861288. Okay, now that is a very important value for us, so I'm gonna store that in my calculator now under S alpha s. So I store it under s, so now you notice I have b in my calculator and s in my calculator. In other words, I have the point estimator for the slope and I have the standard error for that point estimator programmed into my calculator. These are the ever important values from our data step. All right, now once we have that, we're going to go to step two in the process. We're going to need another sheet of paper, so let's go get one of those and we'll come back and finish the problem. And step two is going to be to get our critical value, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, so our next step in the process is to get our table value, t alpha divided by 2. So this is our second step of the process. Now, t alpha divided by 2, in our case, is going to be t.01, and the degrees of freedom for that is going to be n minus 2, so in this case it will be 13 because n is 15, right? All right, so let's go to our table and figure out what that gives us. So we have to go to the 0.01 column and look up degrees of freedom 13. Okay, so we're looking for 0.01, 13 degrees of freedom, which gives you 2.65. Because our critical table value is 2.65, 2.65, and now we're going to take that and calculate the margin of error. So remember, your margin of error formula is normally your table value, which in this case will be t alpha divided by 2, and then you have to multiply by your standard error for the estimator. Now our standard error for the estimator is s beta 1 hat, so this is quite easy at this point because we've calculated this quantity already. So t alpha divided by 2 is 2.65 and s beta 1 hat we calculated down here, that's going to be our 0 0.039188 dot 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 value. Now I have that stored in my calculator under s so I can just plug that in now type it out. So let's see, we'll have 2.65 times alpha s. And when I do that, I get 0 0.10385, right? So 0 0.10385, if I round, if I just write 4 dot dot dot, we'll know that I'm going to be keeping that in my calculator stored under, in this case, I'll store it under x because I'll use that later for my margin of error. Okay, so the margin of error is done. We have that quantity. And now the last step of the process to, to finish the interval is to take that quantity and normally subtract it from our point estimator. Now x bar is our point estimator in the first confidence interval we ever learned, but now our interval is going to have the point estimator beta 1 hat. And all we have to do is subtract off that error from beta 1 hat and then take beta 1 hat and add the error to it. So in this case it's going to be our beta 1 hat value, which is 0 0.216, let's say, minus the error we just calculated above, and 0 0.216 plus the error we just calculated. Now, for our problem, I actually have these values stored in my calculator, so I can just enter them right away as um, alpha b, so b minus the error, and then I'll do the same thing, but I'll do plus the error. And so it gives me the answer in my calculator as 0.112 up until 0 0.320. Okay, so that's worked out to three significant digits there. All right, and so finally what we're saying here about our answer is that the we believe the slope to be somewhere between, right? So we believe the population slope to be somewhere between um, 0 0.320 and 0 0.112. So that is our interval estimator of the population parameter beta 1. Okay, so we're basically saying that our slope then 
is something positive. Do you agree? Because every number in this interval is positive, right? The whole range, the entire interval is positive. There's no zero inside the interval. Zero is over here on the number line to the left, right? And all the negative numbers are behind that. So no matter what value beta 1 actually takes on in this interval, right, we're going to assume that it would be something positive because if one of these numbers, no matter what number we have in here, it's going to be positive. So at that point, we could conclude safely that there is, in fact, a positive linear relationship, or at least this interval implies there's a positive linear relationship. Remember, the confidence level is 98%, so we would say we are 98% confident that so we are 98% confident that a positive linear relationship exists. That, that, that. So you'd say it exists between um, temperature and frequency of chirps for crickets. That's what this problem was about. And again, it's a positive linear relationship simply because the numbers in this interval are all positive, and we're 98% confident that the true population parameter beta 1, or the true population slope for this data, is between these two values. At that point, we can safely conclude that it's a positive linear relationship.